Now, um, I've got a, an article I want to, to bring to your attention that I think is quite an important one because it's, uh, it actually brings up some fairly, uh, some, fairly, some fairly good results of things we've been umming and ahhing about for some time now. So this is from The Lancet. Uh, now, I know The Lancet's had some bad press lately, but it doesn't alter the fact it's still one of the leading medical journals. Uh, physical distancing, face masks and eye protection. So what is the state of play? And this was an, an, an analysis, it's just published yesterday, uh, by the COVID-19 uh, Systematic Urgent Review Group. So this is an international group of ac academics, surge systematic urgent review group effort. <laughs> now, they're funded by the World Health Organization, but it does not alter the caliber of these academics, and you can read that for yourself. Now, what they did was a meta-analysis. So they looked at everything that was available and sort of put all that together. And they wanted to look at physical distancing, face masks and eye protection. So that's fine. Now, they looked at 172 observational studies that they were able to find in the literature. 16 countries on all continents apart from Antarctica. And the total number of patients or subjects they were able to come up with was over 25,000. The number was over 25,000. And this included data from the COVID-19, the severe acute respiratory syndrome and the Middle East respiratory syndrome, which are the three types of coronavirus main pathologies that we've had trouble with. Now, no randomised controlled trials were detected in the literature. Now, this is incredible. No randomised controlled trials. So governments are paying universities and academics a lot of money to do research. And nowhere in this whole wide world has any academic group decided to study the effects of transmission of coronavirus using uh, face masks or eye covering or physical distancing. They just haven't bothered to do it. It really makes you wonder why we're paying them this money. Anyway, this group of academics has put together what we've got, so, so we'll go with what we've got. First one, physical distancing. Now, just before I go on to these results, we have to realise that the risk of transmission when you are close to someone depends on two factors. There we are. It depends on two factors. It depends on how close you are to someone and how long you are close to them. They're the two factors. So the closer you are for the longer, the greater the risk. But this study was unable to take into account the period of time, but it was able to take into account the distance. And what they found is if you're less than one metre away, your risk of getting infection from an infected person is 13% risk. More than one metre away goes down to 3%. And if you're, for every other metre that you're further away, so if you're two metres, that would halve again. If you're three metres, that would halve again. So we see this huge distance when we go over one metre distance. And two metre distance would be half that again. So a safe, fairly safe distance is going to be two metres. More than one metre is a lot better, but that's just the way they could analyse this data. So two metres is, 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 a, safe, is a safe distance reducing your chances of getting infection to about one and a half percent compared to about 13 percent if you're closer than a meter so that kind of ends the debate on physical distancing the greater the distance the less the chances of getting the infection i suppose that's fairly intuitively obvious anyway but it's nice to have the data on it face masks they were able to analyze data from 2647 and they found that wearing a mask uh, if you're in close contact with someone and you are wearing a mask, this is you to protect yourself wearing a mask, you have a 3% risk of infection. If you're not wearing a mask, your chances of getting infected go up to 17%. Now, for ages, of course, we've been saying that if I'm infected and I wear a mask, I'm protecting other people from me. That's true. But this also shows that me wearing a mask is going to protect me from infected people. And the risk is that if I'm not wearing a mask, I've got a 3% risk. So if I am wearing a mask, I've got a 3% risk. If I'm not wearing a mask, I've got a 17% risk. So do you want to reduce your chances of getting infection from 17% down to 3%? If the answer to that is yes, then wear a mask. So that's interesting on protecting people wearing masks. 
Um, I was quite surprised by the difference there because, I mean, for, as I say, for ages we've known that wearing a mask is good and it's a big effect if I'm infected to protect you. But this also means I can protect myself from you if you are infected to this degree. 3% versus a 17% risk if I'm not wearing a mask. And there was a stronger association with N95s or similar respirators, of course, as you would expect, as you might wear, for example, in a healthcare situation where there's a much greater risk. And eye protection was associated with less infection as well. This was interesting because the infection can also get in through the eyes, of course, and that showed up to a 22%, the odds ratio of adjusted odds ratio of 0.22, which is a 22% level of protection by wearing eye protection. And again, the, the risk of getting infection through your eyes is going to be increased with increasing physical distance. But that study couldn't really account for that. So interpretation of this. Uh, quantitative est estimates for models and contract, contact tracing policy. So this can be fed into the way that we adjudicate as who is at most risk of being infected from an infected person. But we do need robust randomised trials. And so far, we haven't got any despite all this money we're paying to academics. So disappointed, but we haven't got any. So this systematic appraisal of current best practice is the best thing we have available. And the World Health Organization, who currently say one meter distancing is enough, need to reappraise their guidelines up to two, I would say. Now, I just want to show you a few pictures I've received from Malaysia. That was interesting. This is just one of uh, someone who's written to me with... Um, contacts contact in Malaysia who went for a trip to the post office so they had to queue outside with a uh, good social distancing so that was good and then they had the temperature checked on the way in and inside most of the seats were a lot of the seats were closed off to ensure physical distancing and there was good lines for waiting and physical distancing so I just thought that was of course this is happening all around the world now this is what has to happen as we seek to reduce the level of spread. All I've got to do now is show you some of my favourite people for Tuesday. And here they are. This is Alan, who watches in New Zealand. Oh, that's quite a while back. 20, sorry about the delay there, Alan. It's on the 20th of May. <clears throat> Good to see you watching in New Zealand anyway. This is Anna, who watches from the uh, Ukraine, over there in the east of Europe. Good to know you're watching over there. 2,000 international units of D3, sounds good to me. Uh, this is uh, other. This is Anna Marie, who watches in New York. So, uh, interesting. Fairly typical New York scene there, I think, out the window, Anna. But thank you for sending that in and thank you for watching in New York. Another Anna in uh, Tasmania, south of Australia. Thank you for watching, Anna, in Tasmania. Antoinette, who watches in Sydney, also in Australia. Homemade mask, Antoinette, excellent. That will protect you and it will protect others, according to current data. Arthur, who watches in Perth. A lot of people seem to be in Australia today. Good to know you're watching out there in WA, Arthur. Uh, Arvin, who watches in Ontario, in Canada. Good to know you're watching in Canada. And Ash and Adrian, also in Australia. Great to know I have people watching on the other side of the world. Thank you for watching. Ash and Adrian. And this is uh, Bernard who watches in Singapore. Good to know you're watching in Singapore. And this is uh, Betsy who I believe owns Nessie. And Betsy is too shy I believe so she's quite reasonably put in. Nessie and this is in I think this might be in Pennsylvania and this is Danette who watches in California and I think Danette is a lab 
technician from what I remember. But great to know you're watching in uh, California, Danette.